She's just starting to. You big boy. Hmm? You're a bit more timid. Just relax, just relax. Just relax, 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 relax. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Chook Chat. In this Chook Chat we're going to be talking about feathers. The most precious things our chooks have. We're also going to be looking at uh, molting. Why chooks molt and how you can help your chooks through the molting period. Then we're going to make some molting moments. Uh, a special recipe I've, I've uh, created to help your chooks uh, re replenish their protein to build new feathers. There are different feathers on all different parts of a chook. Feathers perform various functions that you're probably aware of. Um, camouflage, protection, there's warm feathers down here that incubate eggs and keep the chicken warm. There's flight feathers, these feathers across here. And then there's other secondary flight feathers that, that help a chook to, to glide as such when they, um, when they fly and need to escape from, from predators. Um, so are, are you probably aware that chooks are, um, descend from dinosaurs? In fact, chooks and ostriches and turkeys are, are the closest bird descendant to T. rex. Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, it was said that Tyrannosaurus rex actually had scales and feathers. So our chooks are quite are quite special in their their featherdom. <laughs> in a future episode of Chook Chat, we're going to show you how to trim the flight feathers of a chook. Not an ideal th thing to do, and of course you wouldn't do it unless necessary. But sometimes it is important to keep chooks contained in an area that that um, they need to be in for their own safety. So I'm not going to do it now because you wouldn't do this till after molting, but whoop, these are the flight feathers on the chook and you would trim the left hand side of the bird, you'd trim across these flight feathers, but we'll show you more carefully later on. Uh, not a thing you do till after molting. <laughs> Feathers are basically protein, keratin. So when chooks molt, which is happening this time of year, they need a lot of protein in their diet to help regrow those new feathers. In fact, pre-molt, um, at the end of summer, when the days start to shorten a little bit, that's the time that you should be uh, increasing the protein in your chicken's feed to help with the new pin feathers growing through. So the type of malt reflects the egg laying ability of your, ch of your chicken. A chook that does a late fast malt will um, give you more eggs than a, a chook that takes a long time, won't lay over a long period with a slow malt. They basically start malting from around the head, around the head area, down back through the body and finally the wings and tail. So it's, a, it's quite a good system because ultimately they're not left without any feathers. Uh, there's always new feathers coming through as other ones are, 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 are dropping off molting. It can look sometimes like there's been a bit of a pillow fight in the chook pen, but um, 
as I say, it's an important process and there are some things you can do to help your chooks through this process. Primarily, they're quite delicate at this time. This, this chook's not quite molting yet, so she's okay to handle, but with a molting chook, you need to be very careful because they're quite sensitive. Those new pin feathers are very delicate. So if you're handling them, do so as little as possible, but with great care. We might put her back. I'm going to take you through how to make molting moments, uh, uh, a protein ball essentially for your chickens. Great to give them maybe just one every couple of days, not too many. You can't, you don't want to do too much protein for your chooks, but just to boost this time of year. So, okay, first up, you need to, one of the key ingredients in this is linseed, linseed, cooked linseeds. So in a saucepan, I did this yesterday, I put um, a cup of linseeds and well covered it with water, uh, maybe double even the water, and then gently cook it. And it, it turns into this kind of gelatinous goop, really. So that's two cups, two cups of cooked linseeds. Linseeds are really high in omega-3 and fatty acids, great for feather growth, as are black sunflower seeds. There's a cup of black sunflower seeds. Other seeds that you could use, um, a bit more expensive, chia, um, hemp seed, yeah, anything that's kind of high in, in, in oils. Uh, you could even use a sunflower or a cod liver oil would be great too to add into this. The other thing, other ingredient is a high protein bran. Two cups of that. It goes without saying why well, that's good, it's high in protein. And I also use two cups of uh, chicken starter, chicken starter crumbles. They're about 20% protein. Try not to use the ones that are um, medicated unless they are medicated with a, a natural herbal um, additive. This has got uh, regano, which is from oregano, which is a, um, a herbal anti-coccidiostad, which is good for preventing coccidiosis in your chickens, particularly young ones. So two cups of chicken starter, one cup of rolled oats, terrific, also has um, fatty acid and good protein. Chickens love rolled oats. I also use two or three cups of sprouted wheat. I have wheat, wheat. You can sprout mung beans or um, lentils, alfalfa, any sprouted grains is great. This has been sprouting for about four days, so it's um, good for them. It's low in, low in fat. Um, it's a lovely thing, that'll, that'll be very tasty in there. Three, two or three cups of that in there. Um, make a little well. Five eggs. Five eggs. Pop the whole lot in like that, which is kind of fun, isn't it? And we're going to smash all those up, shells, shells included. Not that, it, not that chickens need a lot of calcium this time of year because it's protein that we're after. They're not going to be laying eggs, so um, you don't need to um, provide too much calcium through these next couple of months. The other thing is a bit of uh, backstrap molasses. This makes it very palatable and it's, it's, um, it's high in minerals. Molasses, so half a cup of molasses. I'll pop that in there. Whew. Just a little bit there to drain. And a half a cup of coconut oil. Great for chooks. A lot of people um, say that this really increases egg production. It helps bind these and is very good for chooks. So that's about it. Pop those over there. 
and give this a good mix up. Yum. Smash those up. hands in there. It smells great. Okay, that's that stage. Okay, now comes the fun bit. Wet your hands because otherwise the sticks, the mixture is going to stick terribly to your hands. So grab little, about golf ball sizes, really squash them up, ball them together, and put them on a baking tray. now in the oven in a, in a fairly slow oven about 170 for at least an hour but in saying that uh, over the next day or two if you've got the oven on just pop them in again as your ovens cool um, sorry warm and cooling or out in the Sun for a while because you want to get them quite hard so as they um, are a treat they can't gobble down too quickly I've made this one just for a try I'm going to try and string that up as a um, a pecker. Yeah, there we have our protein balls, our malting moments for chooks. Okay, so these have had about an hour or so. Um, they're looking pretty good. This is had an hour too, but it's quite dense, so we'll we'll give that a bit longer and then put them all out in the sun to harden off a bit too. These are ones I prepared yesterday. I'm going to thread them onto a, a string and dangle them in the chook pen. There we go. There we go. We'll try that out.
next month we're going to take on something a little bit more challenging. Uh, we're going to show you how to dispatch a rooster. There are times, unfortunately, when for various reasons that you have to get rid of a rooster. Um, be it sick or there's too many or you can't find an alternative home for them. So we're going to take you through how to do that in the most humane way that, that we know and um, how to pluck, how to gut and how to um, turn that into a, a stock that you can eat through winter. So a bit graphic, a bit tough, but sadly um, it's just one of those things that you need to do at times. Remember to keep your super mash up to your chooks through the molting period because seaweed is great for feather growth and apple cider vinegar in the super mash will help to um, for the chooks to manage the stress caused through molting. Thanks very much and see you next time. Remember you can order super mash online at naturalchickenhealth.com.au or you can check out some of our older chook chat video blogs on the YouTube channel, Natural Chicken Health, or follow some of our, um, our posts on our Facebook page, Natural Chicken Health Super Mesh. Thanks.